do on this, and I went in and I, I added a couple of things. <coughs> So just to get started on this, chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, and then terms from chapter 4 that we went over today and an article. I'm going to cut the outline on chapter 4 so the take-home quiz is only going to be questions from chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3. And let me stress to you, the questions on the outline are not going to be on the in-class part of the exam, just the take-home quiz. So for our purposes, you're going to be looking at terms, you're going to be looking at articles, and you're going to be looking at links. And I went in and I posted, I thought I posted midterm, I did, and I'll move those up. I posted midterm study terms down here, and I'll go ahead and I'll open these up. I also have something in there posted that says mayor's notes. I, I took notes from when we went to see the mayor, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to type those up and add those in. So I don't have that quite ready for you yet but it'll be in there very, very soon. So chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, about half of chapter four, mayor's notes, and then study terms. So as we do this, I'll go ahead and just start taking questions. And let's just start with the terms to make sure that everybody is clean on these. So if you have any questions about these, why not fire away? Anything at all from the terms? Wait, that's it? Wow. Yeah, that's it. Because I was studying like, Five pages of like Zoom in on him if he's going to do this. <laughs> yeah, zoom in on this. Yeah, it, that's all it is. It, it's, this is a, a, an article heavy exam. So, any terms that you have? Any questions? Go ahead. What's that? Laboratories of democracy. Laboratories of democracy, yeah. Um, laboratories of democracy <coughs> is, is actually the phrase. Do y'all remember that phrase? Yeah. Go ahead. Um, basically, it's saying that the, the states are, especially like the more western ones that were just newly created, there are laboratories of democracy and that they can pass their own laws to test them out before they become national policies. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. If you remember when we were talking about laboratories of democracy, I had mentioned to you that one of the beauties of federalism is that states have the ability, they have the ability to test out a policy within their own borders. <coughs> And if the policy works, then ultimately it can become a national policy. And if the policy doesn't work, then it only impacts that particular state. In other words, they have a, a really unique ability to experiment. And the examples I had given y'all were Wyoming giving women the right to vote, Georgia giving the 18-year-olds, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> the right to vote. Go ahead. San Francisco with the <coughs> Yeah, the, the, the shooting gallery article that was, was part of the, the paper, but I'm not going to test you on that, but that would be a good example of it. But for our purposes, that, these would be examples of the ability to experiment, and if it works, it, become, it can, can become national, and if it doesn't work, then in fact it only impacts that one state. What else have y'all got up here for dual, questions? Dual federalism. What was dual federalism? Go ahead. Not just between the branches of government, but also between the function of the government, between the central government and the uh, local units that are considered as the states. Yeah, that's true. I, I would need a, a little bit more specificity on it. When we had gone over dual federalism, I had mentioned to you the idea that really in the middle of the country, dual federal, the history of the country, I should say, dual federalism was the idea that, that the powers between the, the two branches basically were about 50-50. But there were certain areas that were specifically really designated for federal power, like defense, for example, but there would be specific areas that would be designated more as state areas, like education. So, <coughs> excuse me, um, that's really what we were talking about. Yes? So do we have to memorize all the theories about federalism, like uh, cooperative federalism? Just the ones that are listed up here. That's what I'm looking for. Extradition. Say what? Uh, extradition. 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 Uh, the bottom of the middle. Yeah, what was extradition? Go ahead. Either way. <laughs> I've already answered one. Oh. Uh, extradition is where other states can call um, prisoners who are found in different states and call them back to try them in the yeah, this was actually related to full faith and credit clause. And if you remember with full faith and credit clause, if you had a, a binding, uh, a valid document from one state, it would actually be binding on others. And you could talk about this like with driver's licenses or in this instance with full faith and credit, extradition. If you're wanted in, a, in another state and a 
Like, if you're wanted in Maryland and Arizona stops you, well, they're not going to punish you, but they will be responsible for respecting the outstanding warrant that's on you so they would extradite you back so that proceedings could be led by Maryland. That's what extradition was. Go ahead. The example of extradition is like, like the, like, take, I'll take the, the example for extradition. Does the two, does the father and the daughter who are one in Maryland for, the, for murder, murder, they were captured in Texas. Okay. That's the example, sample, they were extradition, they were one in, in Maryland, but they were captured in Texas. <coughs> yeah, and then extradition would mean what? Head back, head back to Maryland. They would be sent back as sent their accused murderers back. to Maryland to face the trial. Yeah, yeah. What else have y'all got from that first chapter? Yeah, let's do a cooperative federalism. Anybody, what was cooperative? Uh, Go ahead. Um, the federal government and the state government have to work together. Especially, uh, it's especially true in terms of like state and local. They have to work together to get things done. Like yeah. The, the schools and stuff like that. Like you mentioned how MC gets, uh, or doesn't get uh, money from the county and then doesn't get it from the state, but it should, uh, as well as like, roads and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, cooperative federalism. If dual federalism is kind of saying, you know, there's going to be a clear line between where the Fed is going to go and where the state power is going to go. Cooperative federalism is saying it's really not that clear, but it, but it's almost jagged, um, if you will. So if dual federalism is like a cake, you know, you've got your, your federal level up here and you've got your state level up here. Dual meaning, you know, you kind of know where this, this, this dividing line is. Cooperative federalism is going to be more like this, and the idea that maybe one side is federal and one side is state, but they kind of bleed into each other's areas sometimes. And, you know, as much as education is pri primarily a state function, the federal government is going to put regulation on education. So, and yeah. And, yeah, and, and the states are going to be doing some of the same things, too. So they can go beyond that, um, what the federal government wants to regulate or, obviously, what they want to fund. What else have you got from the first chapter? Not in my backyard. Yeah, what was NIMBY? Ooh. Okay, I guess we're into chapter two now. Go ahead. Oh, uh, NIMBYism is an anti-development group, basically meaning that they don't want any development, or it translated to them not wanting any development in their area. Uh, this county is a really great example of NIMBYism. Um, they'll, they'll fight to save one tree, even though NIMBYism. that tree is being cut down to create a bike path so more people get outside on that thing of, oh, we want to protect nature, even though a bike path is helping nature by getting more people out into it. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. When you look at NIMBY, Lim, NIMBY literally means not in my backyard. And that's one way of looking at it. And there's, there's a few ways that you can look at it. Go ahead. I was going to ask if I have to know all the details of the case when you look back to Maryland. Uh, I'm sorry, um, one more time. If I just need to know all the, basically all the details of the case or just essentially the final results in which they established that. Um, let's, I thought you wanted something to say about NIMBY. Let me finish that before I move into something new. Not just for the sake of making sure everybody's clean on this. Not in my backyard. And do you remember the article that we had used? Uh, it was the, the, yeah. the prison one, right? No, it was the Florida one with the... Um, Someone got elected and then yeah, they yeah, announced they had a sex change. And then it was the city manager, and the city oh, manager city. held a press conference, if you remember, and the press conference was to announce a sex change. And they did this in their official capacity. What was this, Largo, Florida? Um, it, take a look at, at that particular article. And if you haven't taken me before, it's usually a good idea to maybe link an article with some of these terms and places. And sometimes it's a real natural fit, like when we were dealing with NIMBY. But when you mentioned the prisons before, that would actually not be a bad example either. So it's not like there's just one that would work. There are maybe one or two that we talked about in reference to these terms, but you can be a little bit creative with how you apply them. Just don't pull something that's something that maybe we didn't talk about, because I do want to test you on what you've learned here. So keep that in mind. Go ahead. You, you had a question. Uh, yeah, I was going to ask a question about the first chapter. Uh, yes. If we have to know basically all the details of the case, I would just focus on the final result on that one. I, I don't know that we spent a crazy amount of time on McCulloch, but but if you remember, it was a it was a supremacy case, you know, with the federal government being not being you know the state governments not being able to to destroy or overrule federal policy. Tax the uh, federal bank. Taxing of the federal bank. Yeah, that's right. Um, go ahead, Keon. So for the. Uh, the percentage it, or 
it's a uh, stats from the outline for chapter two. Yeah. So I know eighty nine thousand is the number of state, local, and federal governments in the U.S. Nineteen million is the state and local government employees. Two trillion is the um, uh, state and local government spent. Two trillion two thousand eight. Uh, what's the percentage? Uh, D. I, I, the outline just says you know percents. Yeah, I took my book back to the office. Does somebody have a book I could use for two seconds? And forgive me on that. Thank you. Thank you. If you look at this, there were some things at the very, very beginning of the second chapter that I, I had, had referenced on this. And the opening percentages, and bear with me while this thing crosses over, but you'll notice up here, and these percentages are probably not as important as the others, but you notice up there, approximately 14% of the United States gross domestic uh, GDP, which is the two trillion that the state and local government spent, um, mentions 21% of you know three trillion. Again, this is the federal expenditures, this kind of a piece on here. And then some of these other numbers, and it looks like Brazilian has, has outlined or underlined a number of these, talking about some of the, the major areas where people are actually employed. So these are just some of the numbers that were there, and they're there really to give you a sense of, of ultimately uh, blah, 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 where the, the money goes and, and different things like that. Um, you notice up here as well, uh, boy, you really did circle an awful lot of the things that we had talked about. I don't necessarily know that you need to get into some of like the 79 and the 91, but, but those basic numbers at the very beginning could be, could be kind of important. 14, 21. Yeah. Anything, anything else that y'all have from, uh, from any of the terms? Because this really is going to be an article heavy, um, an article heavy exam. And, and what I would say to you, again, especially if you haven't taken me before, is with the articles, I mean, it's going to be kind of important on this to make sure that you know the terms because they're going to be multiple letter grades. But, but the real money on this one is going to be coming. You have to know both to get an A, but there's going to be a lot of article stuff on this. And what I'll probably try and do on Monday is we'll, I'll get in here right at two for once, but the other thing is I'll make sure that, that we have access to this room maybe up until about four o'clock. So that way you don't have to cram everything into an hour and a half. If you want to stay longer, you can. So there's no time pressure. You won't have to, but if you choose to, you'll have, you'll have that option. Yes, Lindsay. Straight jacket. Straight jacket. What was the straight jacket? Do you remember? Go ahead. Uh, yes, basically when some when some laws of the Constitution uh, can only be modified by amendments, and since it is very difficult, those laws uh, may be considered as natural challenges and difficulties imposed by the past to the present. Yeah, the, the trick with the state straitjacket idea, and this is jumping into to chapter three a little bit, the idea basically is, is that you want the Constitution to basically be a guideline so that people can do things. And we had talked about this, uh, ironically Brazilian, when we were talking about the Brazilian Constitution. Because if you remember, it was one of the longest and most detailed in the world. And I had mentioned to y'all that when something becomes too detailed, it's very difficult to change. And instead of empowering government to do things, it really restricts it or kind of puts a straitjacket around it. If you remember when we were talking about the constitutions in chapter three, we had given, I had given you a few things on here as far as like numbers and whatnot. And this is actually from page 55 and bear with me, bear with me as this pops up. But you'll notice down here, it says, as a result, state constitutions are longer than US constitution, which only has 7,400 words. Median state constitution has approximately 26,000, ranging from the 9,200 words of New Hampshire to 365,000 words of Alabama's. Alabama's constitution is nearly 40 times as long as the US. So the idea is, is that the longer that these things become, they might have good intentions, but they actually prohibit change in activity more than they actually empower it. So that's what straitjacket is. And if you remember too, and I'll give you one other quote from the very beginning of this chapter. Uh, blah, 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 blah. It's actually, actually John Adams.